Salutations, crustaceans. I'm Lobster, and today we're going to be reviewing the RSD Metro Express from Sadowski Bases and asking, have these improved since their rocky initial launch? Let's find out. This is the Sadowski RSD Metro Express Bass, a collaboration effort between Sadowski Guitars and Warwick. So Warwick and Sadowski are now hand in hand. Uh, Sadowski is still producing their US made basses, but their Metro series basses have moved from Japan to Germany and are being produced by Warwick. And then the Metro Express line, which is what we have here, is produced in China in Warwick's Rock Bass Factory. We did an unboxing of one of these bases back in, I want to say, November of 2020, which was the first run of these bases, and it was less than stellar. It was pretty bad, in fact, and I had a lot of hopes for these bases, a lot of high hopes, considering that Roger Sadowski was putting his name on it, and he is a titan within the bass industry for a reason. I ended up returning that example, and I waited a bit until we got a second run, and this bass is part of that second run. So we're going to see today if it's improved in the quality department, because that was a bit rough early on. Now let's talk about the specs of this bass. The bodywood is a coma, and that is finished in a beautiful metallic green. We have a white pickguard and a control plate with four controls there, and this is a Sadowski preamp, but it's missing the vintage tone control. You have a master volume, a master blend control, and then a treble and bass separate. And I believe the bass control is a push-pull for a preamp bypass. However, you have no tone control, which is kind of a bummer on a jazz bass, as every other jazz bass out there pretty much has a tone control. So just a thing I want, want to point out. The vintage tone control upgrade kit for this bass is around $100 to $150, but I do wonder why they didn't just include that in the bass and just bump up the price accordingly. I think people would rather pay for a fully equipped Sadowski preamp out of the box versus having to shell out an additional $100 to $150 for the parts, plus perhaps additional labor if you're not comfortable with installing it yourself. So that is definitely something to consider. The pickups are Sadowski branded pickups as well, jazz pickups, single coil, and together they sound great. However, this is a spicy preamp and paired with the single coil pickups when they're soloed, if you're in a noisy environment, you're gonna get quite a bit of noise. One thing I need to point out about the PJ version of this bass, which we do not have here today. My original one was a PJ. Um, I would not recommend getting it at this time. The bridge pickup that you have in the PJ bass is still a single coil, and combined with this preamp, which again, does add a lot of kick, it also boosts any sort of single coil hum that you're going to get. And essentially, you'll have to solo the P pickup, or get a noiseless jazz bass pickup, which they do offer as an upgrade, but again, it's something that I wish they included standard. Anyhow, let's talk about the rest of the bass that we have here today. We have a truss rod adjustment wheel at the heel of the neck, which is a great move. I really appreciate that. It makes adjusting the truss rod a breeze, and that is good. The neck is a 21 fret, so you get an extra fret over a fender or a sire. Uh, maple on maple neck, 34 inch scale with a 38 millimeter nut width, and this has a standard jazz profile. The fit and finish of the neck is okay at best. The fretwork is solid, however, some of the side markers extrude quite a bit, and you can feel it running your hand over the neck. In some ways, this bass itself feels kind of unfinished, and I wish that they took the extra time to, I guess, add additional features or give it a little bit more polish, because there's a lot of potential in this instrument, and you'll see once I plug it in. But first, let's turn this bass around. Around back, you can see a decently large control cavity and a standard Fender-ish style four-screw neck attachment, which is no problem for a four-string bass like this. I do wish there was a separate battery door. However, this is a better solution than something like the Sire, where you have to remove four screws and a little panel to get to the batteries. I do wish they included a standard battery door. Um, and at this price point, I would expect it. So kind of a bummer here. 
Moving up to the neck, this is a nice maple neck. I have no qualms with the quality of the wood that they're using here. However, again, I have to mention that the little side markers are quite tactile and uh, kind of bumpy, so I wish there was a bit more polish there. And up at the headstock, we can see that we have some hip shot tuners that are Sadowski branded. These are ultralights, or at least ultralight um, licensed, you know, the, the import ones. Nice tuners. They work very well. And one thing I forgot to mention, which we'll talk about uh, when we spin this base back around, is the bridge. This bridge is a very nice bridge. I really appreciate the thought that went into this. It is a high mass, vintage styled, vintage looking bridge. However, it has a lot of functionality and allows you to do quick string changes because of uh, just the way it's designed. It's hard to describe. I change a lot of strings when I'm doing all these reviews on all these bases because um, I always like to use a fresh set of MJC strings whenever I'm reviewing a base just to keep things consistent. And swapping the strings on here was a breeze because of this bridge and these really nice hip shot tuners. So quality hardware on this base. The knobs and the feel of the pots is very premium as well. These don't feel cheap, which is nice. However, some of the other bits of this base definitely do feel cheap, especially just the finish of the neck, the fit and finish, as well as this pick guard, which is a little bit frilly. But now let's get down to business and see how this base sounds. You guys know what you need to do. Go ahead and pinch that like button so my hand will turn back to normal. Thanks. <laughs> not bad, not bad at all. This is a very lightweight instrument coming in at eight pounds on the dot on my scale that I use here, which is pretty nice. It is also decently balanced as well, which is a well appreciated thing because I know jazz basses tend to be a little bit heavier based on how much mass is in the body. However, as you can see, this is almost a dinky jazz in terms of the shape. Uh, it seems to be like there's a little bit of material removed to make this a bit more ergonomic. I'm not exactly sure of the proportions, but it is a comfortable base and a comfortable body shape. So that's really good. <laughs> so has this improved from the first run? Yes, this is a definite improvement over the original one that I got. That one was just a mess, and it's a shame that they were rushed out to release in that condition. However, Roger said he was going to take care of it, and the subsequent runs would be better and better, and he has delivered here, which I really appreciate. I purchased this base with my own money. I'm not sponsored by Roger. Roger didn't provide this base specially for me or anything. This is a production example, and it has improved from the first run, so that is good. Everything isn't all sunshine and rainbows, though. Um, the first thing is just the preamp and pickup combination. These are great sounding pickups, especially together. And this is a really nice preamp. It's a boost only treble and bass control. Again, my biggest gripe is the lack of a tone control here because you can buy a Sadowski drop-in preamp with the jazz plate and everything for about, I think it was like 160 bucks. Something along those lines, 160 to 200. I don't remember the exact price. I purchased mine from Tomon, but I believe they're available at other places as well. And I popped one in a sire and I, I loved the end result. And that has the vintage tone control. Yeah, so this is a great sounding jazz bass. It has a beautiful jazz growl and it has a lot of kick to it, thanks to this preamp. Let me show you what this sounds like with the preamp bypass so you can see how much oomph that this preamp adds, even with the controls all the way down. Now this is a boost only preamp, so you don't have any sort of cut, which is kind of a shame that they're leaving out the vintage tone control, which will give you that ability to kind of smooth things out and give you a little bit of cut, at least passively. Um, it's not the same as a you know boost and cut on the preamp, but 
I appreciate the inclusion of a tone control in a lot of preamp configurations and not having it here on a jazz bass where a tone control is usually expected is kind of a swing and a miss here for me. Um, that being said, the tone of this bass is beautiful. So here's the bass with the preamp bypassed. As you can see, the preamp adds a lot of kick, a lot of kick there. That is a blessing and a curse, and let me tell you why. When you're soloing these pickups, they're single coil pickups, you will get some hum in noisy environments, and that's typical of a single coil pickup. That's no fault of these pickups, nothing wrong with them. But the preamp is going to accentuate that quite a bit, and your only option is to bypass the preamp. There, that's typical single coil hum now, and you lose the kick with it. A, a tone control usually can get rid of some of that single coil hum when you're soloing a pickup. Um, I know there's other options as well, but again, that makes this bass feel incomplete to me. And the fact that they have the single coil jazz bass pickup in the PJ configuration means you won't be able to escape that hum unless you're just soloing the P pickup. And then, what's the point of the J pickup? They do offer a hum canceling pickup as an upgrade for the PJ. I do wish they included that as standard. A lot of other PJ basses, for example, the Charvel Sandemus, which comes in at the same price point, offers a roasted maple neck, a three band preamp, and a hum canceling J bass pickup at the bridge. So at the $900 price point, in my eyes, it's kind of inexcusable for the PJ. However, if you are set on getting one of these bases, I would definitely recommend the JJ configuration. Now let's go ahead and play with the preamp a little bit. We're gonna go ahead and boost the bass to about 50%. I have to play with a light touch because this is a really hot preamp and it's overdriving my little amp here. Um, yeah, so now let's go ahead and boost the treble control to about 50%, leaving the bass at zero now. <laughs> Not bad, not bad. The treble control in my eyes is a lot more usable. The bass control can give you a little bit of a bump, but go overboard with it and you'll pay the price. Now let's check out these pickups individually. Here is the neck pickup. boost the bass to about 50%. Actually, let's do like 30%. And boost the treble. And let's go ahead and bring that down and check out the bridge pickup now. I believe this is in the 70s position. Correct me if I'm wrong. So you do get a nice growl out of this jazz bass pickup in the bridge position. Now let's boost the bass to about 30% again. 
And let's bring that down, and here is the treble at about 50%. And let's bring that down and center the pickup selector and slap this bass. It needs it. Okay, okay. So the tone, not bad at all. I wish so much there was a tone control. Let me show you why. I'm going to go ahead and put this bass down, and I'm going to show you another bass with a Sadowski preamp that I have right next to me. So this Sire V7 Vintage I purchased used for $450, and the preamp was I believe around $200 shipped from Germany. I don't remember the exact price. But overall that's about $650. And you can do this to a new one as well. I know the V7 starts at around $500 and tops out around $700 and change. Um, this is a preamp that will drop in anywhere. And it has the vintage tone control. So if I am using a hot set of pickups, I can mellow them out quite a bit. <laughs> I feel like the Sadowski that we have here, or the RSD bass, its strengths are exactly what the Sire's weaknesses are. And that is hardware. The Sadowski has awesome hardware with the hip shot tuners and the really nice bridge. The Sire, on the other hand, has meh tuners and a serviceable but proprietary bridge that a lot of people want to replace. However, both of these basses have great sounding pickups, and both of them have very similar preamps now. The biggest difference here is price. Now, I personally like the Sire neck a lot better. This is a fully finished neck, it is a gloss neck, and it feels a lot more premium to me. I know that the Sire V5, which is a roasted maple neck, coming in at $500, is also a very premium feeling neck, and in my opinion, feels better than that of these. Here's what this sounds like. And then here's the preamp bypassed. Is that the bypass? Yeah. As you can see, There's not a huge gain bump like what we're getting here. Uh, but the other thing is I have a tone control. I have the VTC module included in this drop-in. It's all one package. So why get an incomplete preamp and then pay an additional hundred plus dollars to have what you can also just get as a drop-in for any other jazz bass. And in my opinion, you're gonna get a better build on the neck um, though worse hardware, but that's something that you can upgrade yourself if you so choose. I believe the Sire V7 Vintage is around $700 or so, and then purchasing the Sadowski drop-in preamp and installing it yourself, you'd still end up paying less money than you would buying one of these new, and in my opinion, have a better base. Um, you could upgrade the hardware later. Again, that is the Sadowski's strength here, is the hardware. Both the bridge and the tuners are top-notch, However, the fit and finish of everything else is a bit lackluster for the price. Now finally, let's go ahead and put some drums behind this bass. Thank you. 
So here are my final thoughts on the Sadowski RSD Metro Express, the collaboration effort between Roger Sadowski and Warwick Bases out of Germany. This base is a bit of a swing and a miss, and that is kind of a bummer. The biggest problem here is that there are so many other jazz bases that you can get, most for less money, that can offer you a lot more. And if you're really after the Sadowski preamp, you can buy one and just drop it into one of those bases, like what I did before these bases came out with my uh, Sire V7 Vintage. Again, I purchased that base for $450 used, and that plus the preamp, I am still under the cost of a brand new Sire V7, and or a Sire V7 Vintage, and I get to have the Sadowski preamp and some great tone with it. Again, the preamp here isn't the issue, it's more so just the execution of everything. This is lacking the vintage tone control, this is lacking the actual Sadowski name on the headstock, um, and it's lacking a bit of polish. And for the $900 price tag, it's hard for me to recommend this instrument over the other jazz basses which you can have for less money. Again, the Sire V7 I panned specifically for having cheap hardware and a lot of hand-me-ups from the likes of the V3. This base does not have cheap hardware. This has excellent hardware. The problem is that the fit and finish, which Sire excels at overall. They can take a lot of cheap stuff and put, make a great base. This is some high-end stuff, but it was put together, in my opinion, in a way that feels cheap. Between Sire, Fender Mexican series, or the Player series, uh, you have Schechter, you have a lot of options for different types of jazz basses in the sub $1,000 range that can offer you a lot more in terms of fit and finish and have the same level of upgradability. And with every bass that we look at, we have to ask the question, why should I buy this bass? Why should I look at this bass? And this particular model does not do a very good job of answering that. So what am I going to rate the Roger Sadowski Design RSD Metro Express. Ugh. I'm gonna go ahead and rate this bass two claws out of five. In my opinion, this is a subpar value for the $899 price tag. You can get a lot more polish out of a jazz bass for less money. And if you really wanted the Sadowski preamp, you can just buy it separately and drop it in. This bass does not do a great job of differentiating itself from the sea of Fender copies, whereas the American Sadowskis, as well as the Japanese and German-made Sadowskis, are top-notch quality and are amazing basses. This bass, however, does not live up to those expectations. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, everyone. Be sure to like, subscribe, join our Discord, and leave a comment down below and let me know what you think about the Sadowski RSD Metro Express. And as always, until we groove again.